Hi guys, welcome to the next episode in the Simplify Open TX series. Today we'll be looking at more logical switches, this time timer, edge and sticky. Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you've all been good and had a great time flying. So today we're going to go straight back into OpenTX and we're going to have a look at some more logical switches. So again, it's only going to be free this time. So let's get straight into it. So the first one we're going to look at is called Edge. And what Edge does is activates the switch for a certain amount of time when an action or a condition is met. So that sounds a bit more complicated than it actually is. So let's just have a quick look. So if we've, we've got our edge switch here, so, or yeah, our edge function, I should say. So if we choose, for example, the SH switch, which is the momentary switch, then what we're presented with here are two options. Now these are just times. So we can say from zero seconds, and then we could say maybe until two seconds. So what that means is if this switch is held down between zero and two seconds and then let go, this switch here will activate. So that, that's, that's as simple as edge is. It, it's, it's more difficult to explain it than it actually works. So let's, let's have a quick look. So we pop in the simulator. If I just flick it, you'll see logical switch one activate. So that's this one over here. We'll hold it down and let it go for less than two seconds. It does, it activates again. So if I hold it down for a bit longer this time, so we'll try and get it for around, you know, this should be long enough. If I let go, logical switch zero one shouldn't activate. So have a look over there, let go. And as you see, nothing happens because we're outside of this edge time limit. So where can we use that? An example I've already actually started doing is uh, having more than one function on, a mo on the momentary switch. So the first two seconds that we've just had would be effectively be like a little flick. So we could use that to do one thing, but if we wanted to do something else with it, we can just add more edges. So what we'll do is we'll add another edge again on the same switch and we'll start this one off at two seconds. And what we'll do is we'll just click down on the arrow to get instant. And what we're going to use this for is an alert so we know when this time period has ended um, and when the next you know, switch function, if you like, has started. So then we'll add another edge. And again, SH. And we'll start this off at two seconds again, because again, this is in our second phase. And if we leave it at zero, this would be our last switch in the chain. So you could hold it down for as long as you want, let go after this beep, and it will activate that switch. But if you wanted to put more on here, you, you could put, say, four seconds and then have another one that you know, repeats this double block here, starting at four seconds and so on. So let's add some functions to, to actually pad this out to see how it can work in re real life. So the first thing we'll do, we'll set one up for logical switch one and say we've got a flight timer on the plane. We can just do a reset of flight timer, enable that. So the first stage is just enabling or is resetting our flight timer. So what if you've got something like an INAV plane? Well, what we can do, so we'll put our alert in. So we we'll use logical switch two, which is this one here. So as soon as it hits the two second, because it's instant, it will trigger this. So what we can do here is play a sound. We'll leave it as beep, no repeat. That's all we need. You could, if you have multiples, change it to beep two, three. So each beep, or each switch has a different sound. So as the more you use it, the more you get used to which sound is which. So that is our central or our, our indicator for the second switch starting. So next one is logical switch three, which is the actual switch part itself. So what we'll do here is we'll override some channels. We'll set that to 100. 
again we're doing logical switch free for all of these we overwrite the elevator channel 100 override the throttle at minus 100 and finally we'll override the rudder at minus no sorry it's going to be zero and we'll enable that so what that will do is when we go in to this second phase and we let go it will send these parameters instantly to the channel so what we'll do we'll simulate that so as you see we'll just do a quick i haven't actually got a timer set up so maybe we should add a timer just to just to see it so we'll do on i think that'll count down all the time yeah so if we do a quick flick that will reset back to zero obviously you'd use a proper flight timer if you're going to use a timer but this is you know demo so if i hold it We'll hear a beep and then after the beep I'm going to let go and what you want to watch for are the four channels here and you'll see them briefly flick to their positions and then flick back. So if I hold it down, beep, let go, channels flick. And what that would have done, if we were connected to an INAV plane, these channel positions here would have loaded a waypoint mission. So instead of having to remember you know stick positions and all that you could just effectively have a, a menu yourself of beeps so what i'm going to do i'll be doing an, a separate video on a uh, multi-function momentary switch which to be honest will be a very similar to this but i'll include a lot more switches i'll also include one for the osd menu but the thing with the osd menu is you want to if you're going to try it yourself you want to make sure that it's disarmed. So say, uh, just, just because I want people to be safe, say your arm switch is SF, you wanna make sure that that's in the disarm position for this to work. Otherwise, uh, this is if you want this one to be a um, the OSD menu because the OSD menu actually, you need to raise the throttle to the middle position for that to work. And the last thing you want is to raise a live throttle just to get into the OSD menu. So yeah, we'll, we'll put a few more checks in, but as I say, I'll, I'll do a complete video on that with a few more examples and all that good stuff. So that's, that's the edge. So the next one we're gonna look at is timer. So I'll get rid of all this stuff. Right, so the timer function, which is almost at the bottom. Now what this does is we'll switch this logical switch on and off for, it will switch it on for this amount of time and then it will switch it off for this amount of time. So it literally will just, if we set this to one second and one second, if I go to simulate, you'll watch this switch on for a second, off for a second. So it's just checking that. So that's that's basically all it does. I mean, you you'd probably use it for a timer in more complex things. But the example that I thought of is, say you've got a slope saw and you wanted to check the battery every minute just to make sure you've got plenty in the pack. Um, a lot of slope saws, you, because there's no motor, you can use a really simple resistor-based um, analog voltage telemetry system and then send that back. Uh, I think it's something like VF... SO1 or something the actual sensor and what you don't want to be checking it all the time so what we can do is just check it at minute intervals so what we'll do is we'll set this to half a second set this to 59 and a half seconds so in total that makes a minute and then what we want to do is add we'll do our actual check in here so we'll do a less than x and for x I'm gonna, this um, this model here has actually got the INAV telemetry data, but I believe on here you'd set it to A2, which is usually what that analog sensor is set to. But VFAS is our voltage anyway. And then what you'd do is you'd set this to, you know, obviously not the lowest you want, but um, a, a low amount of power that, you know, you, you've still got plenty to land with. So if we set this to, I don't know, 
if we say it's a 3S, if we set it to 11.1 volts, I mean, it's a glider, there'll be plenty in there to land. So, and then what we want is our AND switch on logical switch one. So what it will do is when it gets to this half a second here, the first part, it will do this check. If it's above the voltage, it won't do anything. If it's below it, it will activate this logical switch. And then it will stay off for the, the remainder of the 60 seconds. So because I want to show an example, I'm going to lower that to nine seconds because we don't really want to be sitting around for a minute for a logical switch to, to trip over. Right, so if we add a, um, a special function on here, we'll set this up to logical switch two. And what we can actually just do is read out the voltage so we set that to VFAS. There we go, telemetry VFAS. So if we simulate that, you'll see that's off and on. And what I need to do is bring up the telemetry simulator. So at the moment we've got zero volts. So if zero I volts. There you go, <laughs> it's just told you. So you can see it's working. If I put that up to eleven point two volts it will next time this one comes around it won't trigger o2 but if i drop it back down to 11 volts next time it pops around o2 will activate as well 11 volts there we go so that's just a simple example of how the timer could work so it's it's one of those things where it's hard to find an example for but that will do so let's get rid of this and we'll move on to our last one for today, which is Sticky. So Sticky is a switch that uses an event, which could be a switch, it could be a telemetry setting or whatever. It uses an event to activate it, and then it uses another event to deactivate it. And I thought as an example, we, we could have used the throttle, but there's a much simpler one. If if we got our momentary switch, we don't really want it as a momentary switch. We could actually convert it into a standard two-way switch. So all we need to do for that is go SH and SH. So if I go in the simulator now, we'll see logical switches deactivated. If I switch that, it's now activated and it will stay activated until you switch it back again. So now we've effectively turned this into a standard two-way switch like the arm switch. You could even potentially use it as an arm switch. That's those, those three functions covered. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Uh, there's one more set of, vid of logical switches that we'll be looking at uh, for the time being, and that is the A equals B, A less than B. Also, A is greater than and less than B and the two delta switches. So we'll be looking at those in the next video. And then after that, we'll just move on to a brief overview of special functions. And then following on from that, I'll, I'll probably go through actually useful real, real world um, examples of what we can use using you know, many uh, logical switches and special functions, stuff like having your arming switch on the same radio channel as your flight modes in iNav uh yeah loads of different things that the, the uh, multifunction <laughs> yeah multifunctional momentary switch that sort of stuff so those videos will be coming soon and if there's anything that you'd like to to know about if you drop a comment i'll i'll get on and make a video about that too so i hope you guys have a great time hopefully the weather picks up and gets better again and you can all get out there and fly and have a great time. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, thumbs up would be great. Please subscribe and click the bell icon to get uh, notifications of the next videos in the series. Uh, if you wanna leave a thumbs down, that's totally cool, but please put a comment below so I know where I'm going wrong. Uh, you yeah, know, thumbs down, it's, you know, it's, it's your opinion, but if you let me know why there's a thumbs down, maybe I can do something about it and make the videos better. So feedback's always important. Thank you very much, guys. I've babbled enough for now. So I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.